Hey, what's up everybody, Trofnet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards and interesting decks to play around with. What's this? Trofinet finally making another deck guide? Indeed, indeed. I've been working on this setup you see, well, right here, down here, on the side, uh, to make my deck guides a bit more structured. And I've also taken the leap to add my face cam so you're not just dealing with my disembodied voice. Any feedback on the new setup is really appreciated, but this should allow me to make these kinds of deck guides a bit more frequently. I hope you like it, but without further ado, let's dive into today's deck. It's actually an upgrade to a classic of mine, from the Squiretail Shuffle to the Harmonic Shuffle. A Squiretail movement-based deck I've been using in last season and this season to do most of my ranking with, and it's pretty fun if I can do if I can say so myself. As the name implies, this deck is heavily based on moving around both your units and your opponent's units to gain the upper hand and maximize the potential of a lot of the engine cards in this deck, along with some minor harmony support. You can see the deck composition right here, or check the link in the description so you can try it out for yourself. Let's go over the cards one by one and discuss the more interesting combos in this deck. Let's get the inclusion of some Harmony cards out of the way immediately. Mainly the Trained Hawk and Percival Schuttenbach. Even though this deck isn't specced for Harmony, we still have 7 different Squiretail categories in here with Elves, Humans, Dryads, Dwarves, a Treant, a Beast and a Gnome. I often use Percival as my very first card, however, to bait out High Removal, which works on multiple levels. If he gets destroyed, it's one removal option gone from my opponent's hand without too much impact on me, since Harmony is not the focus of this deck. My opponent might also think I'm playing mostly Harmony, even though it's a movement deck, which they might use to change their tactics a bit. If Percival doesn't get destroyed, I have a lot of options to trigger him and gain a lot of points regardless of the fact that this is not a Harmony deck. First of all, works either way. Trained Hawk is a good supplement to this because it also can move an enemy to the other row, which fits the team of this deck in total. But let's get into the more juicy combos. First up is the Vryhead Brigade. These damage a random enemy unit by 2 on deploy and repeat that ability whenever they are moved to their other row. Bouncing this card up and down is a great way to generate some damage and basically doubles the point gain from your leading ability, which is Guerrilla Tactic which you can use to move one of your units or your opponent's units to the other row and either boosting or damaging them by two in the process. Using those three charges of your leader ability on a brigade nets you 12 points in total instead of the six you normally get. Supplementing those boosts or that damage are the Dolblatana sentries. If placed on the ranged row, they boost any of your units that move by one. If placed on the melee row, they damage any enemy unit that moves by one instead. Nine times out of ten, however, I use them on the ranged row, since I benefit the most from moving my own units, but they can have their uses as a damage dealer as well. Next up, we have the Dryad Matrons. These lovely ladies move to the rightmost place on their row at the end of your turn, if they weren't already, and boost the unit next to them by one. This movement also causes them to be boosted by any sentries you have on the ranged row. Placing a sentry to the right of a matron is a great way to boost them both and keeps boosting the matron every time she moves to the right. Placing two matrons next to one another triggers both of them every turn and that dance is even more rewarding when you have any sentry set up. It's a sight to see. I'm skipping over a few cards here to talk about our last dancing card, the tree and boar. This beast can move to its other row on its own every turn on order and either damages an enemy by two or heals itself depending on the row it starts on. If there's a dryad on the board it can even start jumping around immediately. Combine this with a matron and a sentry and you can probably already see the points flying around. Which brings us to arguably one of the strongest cards in this deck, Melina. Aside from having an affinity to stabbing humans, Melina allows you to move any unit to the other row once per turn. Combined with our other options, this makes Melina the best enabler to both generate more points or dish out some more damage. You can use her to put row-locked allies back into their place, or move row-locked enemies out of their place, move the brigade for two extra damage, or move the tree and boar back to the ranged row before triggering it so you can get the two damage it can deal for free. 
every movement is boosted by the sentries, which can lead to some hilarious back and forths if your board is set up to maximize your gains. Molina is a sneak peek at how movement can also be used offensively instead of defensively. So let's look at the other side of the movement coin, the offensive side. The final power move in this deck consists of lining up your opponent's units on one row and then damaging them all at once. Two cards in this deck do just that. The Crushing Trap and Dragon's Dream. To maximize damage you'll need to play these cards as late as possible and preferably in the final round, especially Dragon's Dream. The rule of thumb here is to play Dragon's Dream when your opponent has three cards left in their hand and to play Crushing Trap when you have only two cards left in your hand. If you lack the setup to move your opponent's units while the round was going, I still have you covered with the two biggest movers in the deck. Geralt Ard lets you select three of your opponent's units and damage them each by two, but if those units were not yet on the ranged row, they also get pushed there on top of all the damage, which should be straight into one of your traps. Nivellen gives you even more control, allowing you to select three adjacent enemy units and moving them to their other row, again, straight into your traps. This combo should be your finishing blow, so set these up carefully and keep in mind how they work. Dragon's Dream is a row effect that triggers on the start of the third enemy turn after playing it, so it could be removed by the few cards that can clear this effect or be replaced by another effect, which is very unlikely but still could happen. Crushing Trap is a trap card on your side of the field and is triggered at the end of your next turn. I find it easier to remember when to play them by using the amount of cards my opponent or I have left. So three cards in my opponent's hand to play Dragon's Dream or two cards left in my hand for Crushing Trap. Hitting a full row nets you up to 18 damage or 27 damage with Crushing Trap and Dragon's Dream respectively and Geralt and Nivellen make it so you can consistently hit close to that number every time. To round out the deck we have some lock options with Moren and Kiaren, and some purify options with Dryad's Caress and Ida. Karate Heatwave is also perfect to remove a high power unit or even a pesky scenario card if you're dealing with something like a double masquerade ball deck. Defenders become rather trivial because of your movement options, but you also have one in Figgis Meluzo if you need some protection. Hawker Smugglers also fit the removal baiting role while giving you some extra points in your hand. Oli Dalberg can be used to move a Vryhead Brigade or Trianne Boar for some extra damage or move a Rolock unit back into place. Afco Gale is also included to provide some extra control if you want to knock down specific enemy units or again to bait more removal. Let's look at an example match so you can get a better grasp at how this deck works in practice. In this match here we're facing Skellige. My opponent starts with the popular Ceres opening which allows me to demonstrate the benefit of baiting out removal options. I start with Percival who obviously gets hit with a stunning blow. Next up is one of my sentries since I can use it with the matron next. But alas it gets destroyed by a gutting slash. Next up is Pafko since I can't use the matron yet. And he survives, but the 12 points Fall Blood Champion has appeared on the other side of the board, so I probably won't win this round. We're still only at 6 cards left though, so let's play that Matron either way. In comes the second Gutting Slash. Now at this point, moving further would have allowed my opponent to pass, and I would not have been able to surpass their point total with one card but we thinned out the removal options which should only leave around one stunning blow and maybe a Giga Scorpion decoction, so we should be fine. This leads into a pass round, which is the perfect time for a smuggler, which gives us two extra points in hand before we need to pass ourselves. At this point you can already see I kept Dragon's Dream and Geralt in my hand for the final round. In that final round, we also pull Nivellen, which gives us the ideal hand for our final finishing blow. Still, we know there might still be a stunning blow in there somewhere, so we start with another Smuggler. And there it is! Perfect! Next up is Figgis, our defender, since he now can't be targeted by a stunning blow again and killed in one go, which buys us some time to perform some setup. Our second Matron comes in next to start boosting some units. 
While our opponent is doing their own thing, we start setting up our sentry combo and add a Vryhead Brigade. Oh look, there's that Giga Scorpion decoction taking out our defender. But at this point our setup is largely complete and their removal options are gone. In comes Melina, who starts moving the brigade again, triggering the damage and some extra boosts from the sentry. The Dryad Matron is also still hopping to the side, and Polly Dahlberg comes in next to move the brigade again. At this point, I admit I get a little bit too cocky, and I already moved the brigade twice more to dish out more damage using my leading ability. This would have been better to use later on, but I was afraid to lose the brigade and the benefit of doubling down on my leading ability in the process. If I needed to move an enemy unit, Melina was still there as well, so I could handle any unit my opponent tries to throw my way. Mata gets played here, so my opponent has Saris back in their hand, but we keep moving everything along, so that benefited us more, since at this point we're set up to handle longer rounds. Then we get to the finishing blow. My opponent has three cards left, so let's play Dragon's Dream on their ranged row, which is already pretty crowded. We use Geralt to move some more cards to the back, play around with half the board, before finally filling up that ranged row with Nivellum. Boom! Dragon's Dream goes off and brings my opponent down from 45 to 21 points, with only one card left. Let's pause for a second. This should be enough for you to show how powerful this deck can be. But, as you might have noticed, I got too cocky again. Uh, I shouldn't have moved that brigade that final time, so let this be a lesson you can learn from. If you have the option to move units around, don't put everything on the same row, because then this happens. I chose this match in particular because it really shows you how versatile this deck can be, but also what you need to be mindful of. Its biggest weaknesses are heavy removal decks, especially poison and lock decks, but even those can be overcome by being aggressive in the first round and removing key cards with Karate Heatwave. Because of the nature of the Dragon's Dream combo, winning the first round is important, so you can clean up with your final card if necessary. Keep them units dancing, however, and you should be in for some nice wins with this deck. And it's a pretty original one to that. And that's it for today. What do you think about the Harmonic Shuffle deck? Got any ideas on how to improve it? Or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out, because that's what we're here for after all. Any feedback is greatly appreciated, and you can check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynuts. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support, again, is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye! <laughs>